name is Katie. Welcome to my Fluid Art channel. Today, I want to do just four colors um, and a couple of wandering straight pours. I think I'm going to start like here, come around, start here, and come back around this way. We'll see. All right, let me tell you about my colors. I have a Windsor Newton Blue, Windsor Blue. All my, my paints are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And for this pour, they're about a, they leave about a two second trace on top of your paint. My white is a Titanium White by Amsterdam. I have a gold, which is an Amsterdam gold, and I have a turquoise blue by Liquitex. I'm going to need two cups. I'm going to start with the Windsor blue. The white, the gold, the turquoise blue. Back to the Windsor Blue. White. Gold. Turquoise blue, Windsor blue. I'm gonna try to get as many layers in here as I can. Probably three. White. Gold. Turquoise. Always make sure your canvas is level. Windsor Blue, and I'm going to end it right there. Okay.
If you want fingerlings, just get closer to your canvas. Now, you know, I think I'm going to go back in the same direction. I like the way that looks. You get softer effects if you pour from up high. You'll get, you'll get more defined fingerlings if you stay close to your canvas. It depends on what you like. I like them both. All right. Let's give it a torch. Pretty. Can't go wrong with blues. All right, I have some table scraps here. A really pretty blue that I picked up off of the table from a painting from yesterday. Um, stick around. I'll show you how I pick up my, my table scraps. I've been asked by a couple people to show that. You need a floor extender. 
If you like your composition, you don't want it rolling under because it will grab that dry canvas and roll under and you'll lose, you'll lose a lot of stuff from the outside. And bring it right up to your pour. Yeah, we got some crazy weather around here the last couple days. Uh, day before yesterday, it was 20 degrees. Uh, yesterday, it was 72. And today, I think it's going to be about 40. It's beautiful. Yesterday, I uh, opened the windows up, let the sun in. And then today's winter again. We're pretty lucky here though. Our, our spring starts pretty early. Usually you can get into your garden by the 1st of March. Or five days into March. All right, cool. I like this here, pretty. Okay. I think I'm gonna go to that corner first. Always start with your paint in the middle of your canvas. Always go back to the middle. I think I'm going to go to the corner near you again. This is a 16 by 20 inch canvas. that corner there. Ready? I don't paint with all blues very often. I just felt like uh, doing that today. All right, is there anything we don't like? We have enough paint to make a few adjustments.
I think I want to take it to that side. We have a little bit of paint left. Actually, I like that right there. I'm not too sure about this. Step back and look at your painting for a minute. It's not going to dry on you that quick. I think I like it. That gold is going to be beautiful when it dries. That Windsor blue will be, uh, will dry a lot darker. Yeah. When you're done painting, always scrape the bottom edge of your canvas, touch up your corners. If you're new to fluid art, sometimes sticking with just a couple colors in the same family are the way to go. Uh, you've probably heard about making mud. You're not going to make mud if you, you stick with one color group on your color wheel. And if you haven't gotten a color wheel yet, you can get a little pocket size one. They're a couple dollars worth every penny. All right, I'm going to take my gloves off. I'm going to give it a final torch. I'm going to bring it down for a closer look. Well, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to move my, my painting to my drying table. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how I pick up my uh, table scraps. We should have a nice color. Everything's blue. You want to make sure you get all the bubbles out of your painting. If you look into the light, you can see if you still have bubbles. Keep your torch moving. I'll just leave the camera on. I'm going to move this over to my table. I'll be right back. Make sure your drying table is uh, also level. All right. Now this is this is how I do it. I learned this from Kieran Dershon uh, from Waterfall Acrylics. You take your, your table plastic, gather up the corners, gather up the middle. Squeeze your paint down. A little hole in the bottom. And squeeze it out into your cup. And this paint is perfectly fine to use again. If your color is good, you can even put it in a pour. If the color is kind of funky, you can use it for a floor extender if it's going to go over the side anyway. This is going to be a pretty shade of blue. All right, I'll get more of that. Beautiful color. 
I would use that in a pour. Kind of a turquoisey uh, with a little bit of metallic from the gold. I start with a clean plastic so there's never any lumps or any weird things in it. And uh, why make a cup of paint just for a flow extender? So, I'm going to, I was going to bring you down and show you a closer up. Okay, hold on. I'll bring you down in a second here. Pretty. You can't go wrong with all blue for sure. Sorry about the glare. I like it. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thank you. Please come back and see me again. I think the orientation is this way. No, oh, maybe that's upside down. <laughs> Thank you. Come back and see me again. Bye.